Hi, thank you so much for choosing to be a host family for CISV this summer. We're so excited to have you host an 11 year old villager in your house. It's a positive and um, memorable experience for everyone uh, in the whole family. It's really nice to get the whole family involved. And if you're a new family, it's a good, um, yeah, a good, a good way to see what your child might be experiencing if they're participating in CISV or just get a better taste for what happens at CISV programs. Yes. Today we're introducing some of the tips and tricks that will help you be successful in hosting your village delegate in your home. Um, we hope that's helpful. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to someone um, at your chapter, either the village planner or host family coordinator that can help answer any specific questions you might have. So the mission of CISV International is to educate and inspire action for a more just and peaceful world. And one of the ways we do that is through our programs. Um, we'll be hosting a village this summer for 48 11 year olds, their leaders, junior counselors and local staff. And one of the experiences the delegates get to have is having two times that they stay with a local family and experience um, our culture, our food, our activities, and just learn a little bit more about who you are. And it's interesting to be able to get a sense of their family and culture and them to get a sense of your family and culture. So it's, it's nice to be away from camp and actually experience the other country. And remember, they are 11, so they may be missing their families a little bit. It may be their first time away from home. They will probably be very excited to be here, but there may be some transition that they're experiencing at the beginning. We often see that they may be a little bit homesick or just trying to kind of adjust to the new time schedule or weather or experiences that they're having. In the middle homestay, um, we often see sometimes they're actually camp sick and they miss their friends they've just had, so it may take them a little bit of time to adjust to it. Uh, but as long as you keep an open mind and open communication, we know that you'll have a great experience with them. They also could be tired and ha or have jet lag, so um, don't read too much into maybe their, their quietness. Um, and, and even the language barrier could be another thing. Yeah, we often see that with 11-year-olds. They may not have started learning English in school yet. Um, some countries will speak very fluently and have no problem communicating. Um, others may have some trouble. Um, so, you know, just rely on Google Translate, rely on hand signals, drawing pictures. If you have your own children, they're often great translators figuring out what, what kids are trying to communicate uh, just by using kid tactics. Yeah. Google Translate's nice, so we have all the technology now. Okay, the responsibilities of a host family. Uh, of course, we always want to make sure that the delegates stay safe and healthy and well at all times. That's our primary purpose, is to make sure that we don't endanger them or put them in any risk that you would not want your own child to experience. Uh, make sure there's adult supervision at all times. And that's somebody over the age of 18. Make sure you, you share your culture, uh, family meals, you, you know, try to do something, maybe an American type of a meal. Um, you could take them to McDonald's, um, maybe Chick-fil-A, that's the type of thing that they, you know, they wouldn't have there. And you don't have to take them anywhere special. Just do what your family would normally do, fun family activities, um, whatever you would do at your house, around your neighborhood, sports, games, that kind of thing. So one of the things that we find is very important um, when we have our delegates at host families is that we don't allow phone calls or emails home. Um, I know if you are a parent, that might sound a little bit scary or counterintuitive, but we find from our experience over the years and through research that that actually makes homesickness worse or it may cause homesickness if they're not having it already. The leaders are in contact with the parents throughout the village, including when they arrive. So we ask that you, that you please do not allow any phone calls or emails home from your delegates to their parents. Um, if you have contact information for the parents, we encourage you to contact them and maybe share photos, uh, stories of what's happening. The sending parents always really appreciate that, but please do not allow the child to call home. Yes. Um, emergency calls are, are not permitted home um, without contacting the leader first um, and the village staff. So please do not let them call home in any kind of emergency. Let the leader or the staff decide what the emergency is. 
And once you agree to be a host family, um, once the local chapter has the information, they'll share with you who you will be hosting, what, who, where they're from and what their names are, as well as their time of arrival. Most people will be arriving at the airport. Um, when you go to the airport, we ask that you bring some sort of identification that you are from CISV, either wear t-shirts, make a sign that welcomes them by name or by country um, so that they can easily find you when they leave the secure part of the airport. And don't forget to take a picture of your delegation um, or, or person, whoever you're picking up, you know, with your sign, things like that for the chapter. And at that point, the leader will be with the delegation as well. Um, then they will make sure you have all, all the information you need, head to the camp, and you'll take the delegates along with their luggage home to your house. So keep in mind um, that they do have luggage. And if you're taking four kids, that you have will have four pieces of luggage. If you have a delegation coming in early and you're also hosting the leader, you'll have five pieces of luggage. So you may need to take two cars to the airport. Um, and Remember that CISV rules and insurance requirements say that any person driving on behalf of CISV must be 23 years of age or older. So please make plans for that when you're accounting for getting them home from the airport. And your insurance information needs to be on file with the local risk manager. Before the leader leaves you uh, with the children, they will provide you with forms, um, the health and legal information form, that's going to give you information about any special medical needs they have, any dietary um, special instructions that they have, the contact information of the parents, um, how well the child swims. Um, Allergies. Yes. Anything like that. And you will also receive information from the chapter about how to get in contact with both the village staff, or uh, with the village staff, who will then help you get in touch with the leader if, if that was necessary. Yes. So it's always good to review those forms and make sure you have those before you leave the airport or before you leave the village. Yeah, most programs are in the summer and uh, a lot of people take the kids swimming. Just be sure that you know the delegate's ability to swim and if there's someone that may not know how to swim very well, that type of thing, that you are very aware of that. And one of the first things you'll want to do is make sure that you introduce yourselves to the, uh, the delegates that you are hosting. Um, and you may want to write out your names because sometimes it's hard to hear for them hearing in a different language. They may not totally understand what your name is. So um, maybe giving them a, a list with everyone's names and the family so that they feel comfortable referring to you in a way that you're uh, comfortable with. Many of the delegation, if, they're, if you're hosting the whole delegation from one country, they're going to speak in their own language. Um, make sure that you don't feel like they're talking about you or, or anything like that. Um, it's just very comfortable for them to do that. And sometimes their brains need just a little bit of a break. They've been traveling, they're tired, they're trying to do everything in a new place, in a new language, so it's just they yes. need a little bit of time to themselves just to decompress and relax. And it does take a few days to um, get used to hearing a different language. And, and it does take them a while to get used to hearing and speaking English all day. So they kind of need to revert back into their own language sometimes. Absolutely. And that's why we recommend that planned activities are great and, and being um, excited and considerate of what you would like them to see, but also remembering that downtime is completely fine for all kids, um, that they are going to be tired. They might want to watch a movie. They might want to play video games. They might want to just kind of relax and hang out and talk. So that's uh, completely fine and, and what we would expect. If you're hosting the U.S. delegation, um, remember that they um, are also just as excited as, as any other country, and, and they also could possibly be homesick just like any other country. They're just like any other delegate, except that they all speak English, really. So even the food could be different at your house from their house. So um, make sure you, you know, have, have fun and, 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 and realize that it's a special time for them as well. You may get a request from some delegates to attend religious services while they are staying with you. Uh, it's not super common, but it certainly does come in as a request. Um, these services may be ones that they regularly attend in their own countries, part of their own faith, or they may want to be ex ex have experiences of your faith or something different. So check with the leaders and delegates to see if they have any expectations there. We ask that you please respect the delegates' wishes CISV is a non-religious organization, so we don't um, enforce or uh, 
recommend any particular religion, but we do uh, encourage people to have experiences with different faiths if they're interested in that. Uh, make sure that the delegates do not get sunburned. This is a tough thing sometimes in the summertime. Um, there's a lot of countries from the north that are not used to having that much sun and the, they don't realize, especially at 11, that they have to reapply the sunscreen. Um, so really try to um, pay a close attention to sunscreen and, and making sure they don't get sunburned. And along with that, please make sure they're drinking enough water. And dehydration is also an issue and one that they will continue to have to deal with at camp. So getting them into the habit early of drinking a lot of water um, would be really great. It's very easy for a child to, be, to quickly become dehydrated. Um, so please encourage them and ensure that they're drinking on a regular basis. You do not have to have separate a separate room for for the delegates um you know they can sleep on a bed a couch the they can share a, a bed if the you know the like two girls two boys that type of thing they can sleep on a blow-up mattress you know um so you don't they can sleep in a sleeping bag they you don't have to have a separate room for for each one if a child seems like they're becoming uncomfortable with the situation you may want to ask a few questions and figure out how to make them feel more comfortable in it but they certainly aren't expecting five-star accommodations or hotel quality experiences. This is all about staying at someone's house and, and think of it as you know your own children having a sleepover with their friends. Don't expect the delegates to like all of the food you prepare. Um, maybe give them a little bit of anything and let them try stuff. Maybe visit visit a restaurant of you know from their country and they can um, you know share their food with you. Sometimes they like to go to the grocery store. That's kind of different. You know, our grocery stores in the U.S. are different from most countries. Yeah, absolutely. And I, it also helps, I think, to um, give them a little bit of tour of your kitchen. Um, so when you get home, um, introduce them to where the kitchen is. Show them what they're allowed to get on their own. Can they get a drink or a glass of water? Uh, or do your house rules allow people to get food out of the refrigerator? Um, do you have expectations about them cleaning? Please don't feel like you have to do all of the normal household chores for them. Uh, treat them like one of your own. So if everyone clears their own plates from the table and puts them in the dishwasher, it's perfectly fine to ask them to do that as well. Um, and just try to make them feel as comfortable as you can uh, in, in your space. Make sure that they know which water is drinking water. Um, sometimes people have drinking water in the fridge or on the fridge um, or in water bottles. Some countries may not like the taste of your water, so, you know, they won't drink the water. So you might want to just keep that in mind um, because they do need to stay hydrated. Yeah, absolutely. And remember to keep in mind any allergies or food issues that you've been told about. Um, and in rare occasions, sometimes a child presents one at the last minute we didn't know about ahead of time. So um, please try to be accommodating to those, especially if they have some medical issues that are attached with that. Um, and it's always nice for, for your hosted um, delegates to know when meals are coming, what you're planning on cooking, who prepares it, if they're allowed to take food out of the kitchen, um, you know, what they do after they're done eating, can they get a snack themselves? All of that information just helps them feel at home and like they're having um, a, a good experience. The bathroom is always an interesting issue um, with kids from new countries. The, uh, they need to know where they are. They need to know how everything in the bathroom works. Um, the shower is a big one. Yeah, so um, make sure that they know how to make the water warm but not too hot. Uh, if you have a shower curtain, make sure they understand how that works because they may not have seen one before. They may have just doors or no doors at all. Um, with the toilet, there are several countries around the world that do not flush toilet paper down the toilet, so make sure you tell them that that is something that we expect. Um, if not, you may get used toilet paper in your trash can, which is not that big of a deal. You'll just need to empty that. <laughs> <laughs> um, but especially if you're hosting uh, children from various Asian countries or Brazil, um, it's going to be very common for them not to flush toilet paper down the to toilet. Right. And, and if you are, you know, let, letting them use, you know, your shampoo, conditioner, soap, and anything like that, anything they may need, just make sure you tell them where all of that is. And, um, and also... 
with the feminine hygiene products, make sure you explain what to do with them as opposed to flushing the toilet paper um, for the female delegates. And with any of these, you know, just keeping the lines of communication open and making sure they know to ask questions if they um, have any or need help uh, will help make it a smooth experience. You don't have to do anything big and special, um, just kind of stuff you might do with your own kids in the summer. Um, but the staff usually has a couple of excursions planned. So make sure that you know um, from the leader or the staff what the excursions are so you're not repeating the same excursion that the camp will be going on. Um, some possible activities that might be interesting to you, maybe local museums, a miniature golf, a baseball game, the zoo, even going to local stores and letting them see um, what the experience is like. Um, sometimes community pools are a good way to do it, just exposing them to what your normal life and recreational activities are. Yeah, and, and make sure you don't take them like on really long car trips. You don't want them too far away from the leader um, who is their adult guardian at this point. So um, try to stay in, in the area. And you may get some requests from delegates to go shopping for souvenirs. Uh, that's totally fine. But once again, don't feel like you have to take them to any fancy stores. Uh, the leaders should give you some guidelines about how much money they expect uh, the delegates to spend on, on your particular host weekend. Uh, sometimes just a dollar store or a Walmart or Target um, will fill their needs or seeing some of the snacks at the grocery store um, if you have any specific questions or get any specific requests from your delegates, always feel like you can check in with the leader to see if that's something that, that they feel like is appropriate. House tours and rules, make sure that you um, just explain what areas of the house you know they're allowed to go in, if there's an alarm system, if you keep your doors and windows you know, closed or locked. A lot of times in other countries, they keep their windows open all the time because there isn't air conditioning. And please encourage them to come to you if they have any questions, um, or especially if they start feeling sick, physically sick or homesick in any way. You'll want to know that information, uh, number one, to be able to share it back with the leader when you drop them off at camp, but also um, just for your own information so that you can help take care of any issues that may arise. So keep in mind, although these are fairly young children, age 11, um, they will have a need for personal space, um, or may have expectations about privacy when they're trying to change or shower or use the bathroom. Um, so please just be aware of that. Um, and also please be aware of the guidelines that CISV has on child protection and making sure that they are not alone with adults in rooms, um, that they you know, have each other uh, to, to take care of the situations that they need. Um, and uh, be clear with them if you have any expectations about your privacy as well. There are spaces that you don't want them to go into or times when you, you know, will not be available to them. Um, just, just communicate that with them and let them know. Um, when they first arrive, there, many of them will have jet lag. So keep in mind the first day they may need to sleep um, quite a bit. Um, and so make sure they know where their sleeping time is, and, you know, when it is and where, where it is. Yeah, a couple things that help with jet lag if you have a child that's experiencing it pretty severely. Um, try to get them on a, on a normal sleeping schedule uh, in our time zone as quickly as you can. Um, so maybe allowing for very short naps, but then getting them up and active and out in the sunlight will really help them readjust to the new time zone. Um, keeping their meals on a regular schedule based on our time zone is also really important so their body adjusts. And then drinking as much water as possible is one of the best cures for, for jet lag. And, and we just make sure they know where to put their, their things. Um, if they have some dirty laundry, even over that first weekend, it would be nice if they went to camp with all clean laundry. Mm -hmm. And definitely over the mid-weekend, yes. they, they probably will have some dirty laundry. Yes. There's other things in your house. Make sure they know how to turn the lights off but on. Again, open the windows or not open the windows. Um, what to do if it's too hot or too cold, If maybe even if that's just telling you. Mm -hmm. Yep. And if you have um, 
any technology in bedrooms, TVs, computers, tablets, any of that kind of stuff, please make sure it's not connected to the internet so they don't attempt to call or email home um, when they're on their own. And I would also encourage limiting screen time when they're supposed to be sleeping because that can just also really interfere with setting up a good uh, sleeping schedule and recovering from jet lag. And the delegates are not supposed to have their phones. Uh, they should have given them to the leader at the airport. Um, they're not to come to the host family with phones. So um, let the leader know if somebody does have a phone. If your own child has a phone, just really pay attention that they're not um, on their phone and ignoring the, the delegates that, that are visiting them. Absolutely, and make sure your own children, uh, no matter what their ages are, uh, well, I guess age appropriately, understand the rules as well. So they're not encouraging the visiting children to use their phones or um, you know, helping them break any rules that you might have. It's, it's really important for the family to all be on the same page. Yes. And other things to think about for your home, if there are um, bikes, toys, uh, other activities, outside games that you use on a regular basis, just show them what can be used, when it can be used, if they need permission to do it ahead of time. And once again, please make sure they're following any safety rules that you have, like wearing helmets when you're riding bikes, um, and just taking care of them like you would your own child. If you're going to allow real-time TV watching with your visiting delegates, please be aware that sometimes the news may be jarring. Um, the delegates have been traveling or they've been away at camp already for a couple of weeks. Um, so the news sometimes may show something from their own country they're, they don't, they're not aware of or just things that might be disturbing. So that's something that it might be better to avoid uh, watching in your home while the delegates are with you. And just be aware also of the ratings of some of the movies and stuff like that that maybe even older children in your house might be watching that, you know, just make sure it's age appropriate for the delegates. Please just use common sense, act responsibly, and, and, and if anything arises, the first thing you really need to do is inform the leader. Absolutely. And that can be anything from a, a low temperature that a child might be running to, um, you know, having a bike fall and getting some skinned up body parts. Um, you know, we don't want to overreact to anything or make, make the child feel uncomfortable. But since the leader really is their surrogate parent for these four weeks that they're away, we want to make sure the leader has all the information they need um, and that nothing becomes worse. It's very unlikely that you will have a serious accident, emergency or medical incident happen. But if you do, you may be asked to help the leader fill out what's called a CISV incident report form. Um, that is our internal way of processing all of those events for both the parents and for legal purposes. Um, so you may be asked to assist with that if something serious does occur. And make sure you take the health and legal forms with you wherever you go in case something does happen. and you need to run to a medical facility, you have all their information with you at all times. Absolutely. Um, and because medical insurance in the United States um, often works on a reimbursement basis, if you have any medical expenses that are occurred while a child is at your house, please obtain a detailed itemized list of the services and charges so that the leader can uh, go through the proper steps to get reimbursed through their own personal insurance. And if you do go to any kind of medical facility, you really need to call the staff and the leader immediately because the leader really needs to meet you there. Yeah, absolutely. And the first line of defense, if you have a medical issue that you're concerned about or a health issue that you're concerned about, please call the village doctor uh, who is a CISV volunteer um, and also a medical doctor so they can be sort of the first point of reference and maybe give you some advice on whether it needs to go to an emergency room or some other medical professional. Now open day occurs in the middle of the village and it's a really great way to, if you're hosting at the beginning of the village, to get to see your delegates again that you've hosted and become friends with. Absolutely. So check with your chapter for the time and date for open day for the village we're hosting um, and we hope you can join us for that. It's a, it's a lot of fun. Um, they, they all dress up a lot of times in their country's 
um, traditional dress and they sometimes they do a little dance they have tables with candies from their countries and it's really a fun time to to go and visit them if you have any questions or experiencing any difficulty in in working with people from other cultures CISV does have some great resources to help you with that I think one of the best tools there is the cultural iceberg um, there are a lot of things that we expect to be different when we meet somebody from a different place, maybe their language, their dress, the food that they eat, the music they listen to, um, the history of where they come from. But there's a lot of things about culture that can be very different from people who even live next door to you, who may have the same nationality or the same language, but still have different culture experiences or cultural expectations. So it's good to really remember that things like notions of modesty or concepts of beauty or what justice might mean, um, that all can be very different, even from people that you're very familiar with. So you may have lots of conversations about topics that you have difference of opinion on. Um, please remember they're 11, and so having age-appropriate conversations is very important. Um, but don't shy away from having really healthy, um, learning experiences or even debates on topics as long as it can stay um, respectful and non-political, non-religious like CISV's mission requires. Um, after your hosting weekend is over, you may want to stay in touch with your delegates, which is a great idea. So offer your physical address or email address to them for future correspondence. Um, and you're welcome to collect their information if they provide that to you. So we know you're gonna have a great time. Just remember to keep things um, open, to keep lines of communication open, to really embrace the spirit and mission of CISV, um, and to enjoy yourselves as much as you can.